baptisms. How many different baptisms are there in the scripture? Um, and which, what applies today? So is there one baptism, two, three? Let's see what the scripture says. In Ephesians 4 and 5, we're told one Lord, one faith, one baptism. How could this be? One baptism. We know John baptized uh, with water. We know the apostles were baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, and then there's the baptism with water in which we are baptized uh, today. So how can, I mean, that's two, in some people's eyes, that's two different types of baptism. And, 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 and there's three baptisms there. Uh, so let, let's examine the scripture a little closer. If we go to uh, Matthew in chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And we want to read, start with verse 11 here. Uh, this is John. He's out baptizing. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right. So that's two different baptisms right there we're talking about, right? You've got, you know, I indeed baptize you with water, but one comes after me baptizing with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So where does that lead us to? So you got to understand, John was baptizing with a baptism of uh, unto repentance. Um, he, he wasn't baptizing uh, for remission of sins. He wasn't baptizing toward salvation. He was baptizing unto repentance. This was, uh, he was going out and baptizing uh, for the things to come. All right, so if we, so we lead in here to the baptism with the, the Holy Ghost and, and fire. If we go into the book of Acts um, in chapter 1, uh, we're going to find in verse 8, uh, Jesus even says here, he's talking to the apostles, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Ju uh, Jerusalem and Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the wor world. Um... You know, so the the apostles were told to hold on there and wait, and they were going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and if we go on to chapter 2, we're going to go to verse 2. It says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, so here the the apostles were baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. There was the flaming tongue that set um, the flaming cloven tongues like as of fire uh, that set on each one of them. You know that that was this was something that was seen. They they were. Uh, you know, there was a rushing mighty wind and, and the house was filled, you know, where they were sitting at, you know, and, and there appeared, you know, it, this was all seen like it wasn't just, um, an individual sitting there and all of a sudden they just had this good feeling and you could tell a difference in the individual. Uh, this was, it was seen. Like, the, the, all of this that was going on, the filling with the Holy Ghost, the cloven tongues of fire, this was actual eyesight scene uh, that was happening to these individuals. Now, if we go to, um, let's see, uh, if we go to Acts chapter 10, you know, there's another instance with, with the baptism of, of, of the Holy Ghost. Um, and if we begin in uh, verse 43, and this is going to go actually all the way into chapter 11, verse 17. 
but beginning with verse 43. Uh, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision uh, which believed were astonished, so, uh, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. That's through verse 48, the end of the chapter. So we're finding out here that the Gentiles... Uh, were being brought in uh, on this as well in in Acts in the chap in the book chapter two where they were the apostles were baptized with the Holy Spirit they were uh, they received it with power and glory and it was seen and they're, they're, the, they started speaking in languages that they hadn't been trained on and you know the people that were around they knew this. It was miraculous. It was something that happened to help to show the power of God. Uh, and here again, you know, the the uh, the Gentiles were still they weren't at they weren't there uh, during that preaching during that sermon uh, in which uh, the Jews were three thousand were saved. They weren't there. So, you know, they're they're coming in here and they're they're including the Gentiles. Um, and which is the rest of us were the the non-Jews, so to speak. Uh, and as we go into chapter uh, chapter eleven, uh, you know we're going to find that um, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word. The Gentiles are now receiving the word, and Peter was come up to Jerusalem. They were of the circumcision contended with him. They were. This is the, of the circumcision. This is talking about the, the Jewish nation, the people, the Jewish people, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order of them, saying. All right, so in verse 5, Peter begins to speak, and he speaks all the way through verse 15. And, and what he's doing here is he's, uh, replaying the the events of what's happened, um, you know, and in verse 15 he says, "And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning." You know, he's this is Peter, and he's speaking, and he's talking about, you know, I was talking, uh, and and the Gentiles began to receive the Holy Spirit, spirit, right? And and they received the Holy Spirit the same way that that the apostles had, the same way that the Jewish nation had seen uh, this happen. And then he says in the next verse, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he had said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You know, this is a recollection that uh, Peter is having at this moment, that, you know, this is something that Jesus has said that that is going to happen. You know, if so, up through this time, the baptism has not been by the Spirit. Uh, if it was, he wouldn't be uh, recollect, recollecting. Oh yeah, th this is why this is happening. Uh, he wasn't. He was astonished, just as many others were, that this was happening. And, and then he realized, oh yeah, Jesus said this was going to happen, right? Um. So, so we see that. That, that the apostles were baptized uh, with, with the Holy Spirit. We see that there was some Gentiles here uh, that were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to go to um, John 20 and uh, 31. John 20 and 31 were told... Uh, but these are written, uh, we can back up a little bit here. Uh, Jesus saith unto Thomas, Thomas, 
uh, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life uh, through his name. You know, Jesus Christ done many miracles and works and and things and the reasoning for what what he done uh, was was to show the power of God that that people might believe uh, so you know the apostles that there was this mighty uh, show of power of baptism of the Holy Spirit with the cloven tongues of fire you know, this happened in two different occasions that was recorded in the scripture once for the apostles, once when the beginning of the Gentiles, and both times would have been uh, an astonishing event, something that was just, uh, wow, you know, look what's happened. And let's not forget that, uh, you know, the Gentiles, once they uh, were baptized with the Holy Spirit, uh, they were still commanded to be baptized. Okay, so, so they... So it wasn't um, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit and that was it. Uh, they were still commanded to be baptized. Um, so, you know, if we're going back to Acts in chapter 2, um, we're going back to Acts in chapter 2 shortly after the apostles had received... Uh, received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit you know we go to verse 21 and and in this sermon they say and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and some people want to stop there and they're like well you know you called on the name of the Lord you shall be saved but you know this is the same sermon that continues after this you know in some parts of the scripture a couple of verses can be um, a space of time in between but but this is this is all happening this is all being preached there's one sermon here being preached and when he gets to verse um, 36 sorry 37 he says now when they heard this they were pricked in the heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do if all they had to do was call on the name of the Lord as like saying, Lord, Lord, then they wouldn't have to ask this question, would they? The, the question wouldn't be there. They would already know. But the th thing is, they didn't. And so then Peter said unto them, repent. Okay, so this isn't, a, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so this is two, you know, we're talking about being baptized. You got to repent first. Then you got to be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Two different things there. Remission of sins, being washed away, and... Uh, receiving the Holy Ghost. You're not receiving the Holy Ghost and it washing away your sins. You're being baptized for the remission of those sins and then uh, receiving the Holy Ghost as well. It's it's two different things happening at this moment. Um, you know, we, we can... Uh, you know, John, in Romans chapter 6, we're, we're, uh, it's explained to us on... Uh, what baptism is uh, you know it's a it's a burial uh, and a resurrection just as Jesus Christ was uh, buried uh, in the tomb and raised on the third day it, it's it and then as Christians once we're baptized we're supposed to be walking in a newness of life we're told all that in Romans chapter 6 um, you know and and so being baptized isn't all there is in order to being saved. You know, we find this quite clearly, you know, um, if we go to Romans 10 and chapter 4, uh, verse 14. 
Acts Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Uh, we'll start with verse 13, where it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, simple enough, right? But then verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him on whom they have not believed? So how can you call on somebody you haven't believed? And how shall you believe in him in whom you have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay, so, uh, you know, in today's time, you know, you don't have to have somebody like me uh, telling you the word. You can you can pick it up and you can, you can read it yourself, that, you know, um, these are preachers that, that wrote this, this letter, these letters uh, that we have today before us in order to use, in order to find the Holy Spirit, uh, to, to have that life eternal with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, you, you have to hear the Word, you have to believe the Word, and then you have to uh, do it, you know, just as... Uh, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not and do not the things in which I say? Uh, you know, we have to do what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, we can't continue living in our own sinful lives. Uh, in, in Acts 8, uh, we're going to go back to Acts chapter 8. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the eunuch for a minute, and we're going to see this, you know, clearly with the eunuch. Uh, beginning with verse 26. He says, And an angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now here you got to understand, you know, in this day and time, you know, the eunuch wouldn't have had the New Testament, which we have today. Uh, the only thing he would have had was the Old Testament and, of course, the apostles and those that the apostles appointed uh, to preach the word in order to uh, help out. So, so Philip had to join with him here. And the place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh, speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they were went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hindereth me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So here's, a, you know, he says, If thou believest, thou mayest. You know, just getting your head dunked in water isn't baptism number one you have to, you have to hear uh, about Jesus you have to believe what you've heard about Jesus and obviously in teaching Jesus baptism was discussed baptism was mentioned when teaching Jesus how else would the eunuch have known to say seeing here is water what doth hindereth me to be baptized and so um that happening here, you know, 
And the eunuch said, I believe uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the great confession. That's something else that we're supposed to do uh, in order uh, to, to receive salvation is, is to uh, confess Jesus Christ before man. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, you know, so we're, we're doing this um, in all this we're, we're seeing here that, that there is a baptism of water. Now what differs John's baptism uh, a baptism unto repentance with water and the baptism we're baptized with today that happens to be with water. Uh, both happen to be with water. If we go to Acts chapter 19 we're going to find um, Um, we'll start in verse um, 2, 2 to 6 here. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Um, and they said unto him, We have not so much even heard as whether there be a Holy Ghost. So these individuals were baptized, but they didn't even know that there was supposed to be a Holy Spirit. You see, John the Baptist was not uh, preaching the receiving of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was uh, preaching a baptism uh, unto repentance uh, before the coming of Christ. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. So they were baptized with that baptism uh, that John was preaching. Uh, and then... Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that ye should believe on him which should come after me, that is the Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Okay, so, so here you see... The baptism that John was baptized with is not the same baptism that we're baptized with today. They both happen to be in water. However, John's was unto repentance, which is something that we no longer do. That was something that was done prior to the coming of Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was something that was done to show power, to show um, glory, uh, both unto the apostles at the beginning of the teaching, and then again to the Gentiles uh, to to show unto the to the world, to the Jews and the Gentiles that that everybody was being included in this. It wasn't just for the Jews. Um, so, you know, we see there that you know John's baptism, baptism today although both in water are two separate uh, types of baptism. Uh, so, taking all this into consideration, that there's, you know, we're told, in, again, in Ephesians uh, 4, 5, yeah, 4, 5, that, that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There's only one baptism around today, and that baptism is, is in water. Now, don't under, don't misunderstand me and, and think that there is something special about the water. Okay, the only thing special about the water is the obedience, and it's and it's it's all in our heart, right up here. It's in our mind. It's in our heart. It's in our desire uh, to serve the Lord. If we have a desire to serve the Lord, we're going to do as the Lord would have us to do. Uh, and he wants us to, he, he tells us, he commands that we be baptized. Uh, so, one baptism today, and it's not of the Holy Spirit. You know, when's the last time uh, anybody, you or anybody else around, has seen someone be baptized with the Holy Spirit? And I'm not just talking about, oh man, look, their, their, their attitude just all of a sudden changed. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you see in the Bible, where where you saw the Holy Spirit fall down on them, where you saw the cloven tongues of fire land on their shoulder. Have you seen that today? 
You have not. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is not something that goes on today. It was done for a purpose and for a reason. And even the Gentiles were told directly after being baptized with the Holy Spirit that they needed to go be baptized. Um, all this being said and done, let's let's go to John 5 and verse 39, uh, where I want to read simply. Jesus Christ says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life. And they and they are they which testify of me. We need to read the scriptures for ourselves. We need to go out. We need to study. Uh, and we need to, to put the scriptures together. You know, one baptism is, means one baptism. It doesn't mean that in a different spot in the scripture there's two or three. Uh, there's one baptism. It is in water, but it's because of the heart. Uh, it doesn't matter what body of water you're baptized in. So long as you can be buried, it's enough.